On today's exciting episode of Have a Knife Day with Mr. Rexu, we're going to go on a deep dive with one of CRKT's collaborators by the name of James Williams, who is a former U.S. Army officer with more than 50 years of experience in the martial arts because he, he knows more than one. He developed the system of strategy, a unique approach to unarmed combat that he teaches to spe- not only special operation units, but globally to law enforcement agencies. When he is armed, though, you'll find him brandishing blades he's created. I like that. Blades like the Hisho and Hisatsu fixed blades, the Shizuka Noken, and the now legendary Hisatsu folder. Okay, so this is my collection. Do I own all of the knives? No, I don't. But I have a pretty decent collection. So we're going to take a look at the Hisatsu series. And there we go. So... For me, ah, ah, here we go. It started with this. Now, if you've ever watched any of my other videos, you know I like to get aftermarket sheaths, get things modded. Sometimes I do it myself. No, I don't do it for other people. <laughs> if anything, when I when I mod things myself, I want to let you know that it's so even, so even, so so easy that it's like, just like talking. So easy, even I can do it. So this is Red Hill Sheaths. You're welcome, Red Hill Sheaths. They added this, I added this. I'm like, hey, you know what this thing needs? Fire starter. Okay, at least for now. This is a uh, Nano Striker XL. Kydex Sheath. Belt loop. Can be taken off, multiple attachment points. I had a guy over at uh, Plaza Cutlery, which is no longer available. Somebody should answer that telephone if you can hear it or not. So this is gutted paracord. One of the workers there did it for me at a very reasonable price. I lost his business card, and I can't remember much of my own name, but, you know, he's a great guy. He exists in my memory as a face. Check out the detail on the handle, and let's pop this blade out. That's what you said. That's what I said, too. So here it is. When I saw this for the first time, I'm like, oh, baby, yeah. It's a good-looking blade. Now, mind you, I had these added afterwards. Now, Mr. Williams uh, does have these installed on some of his knives. And the vesserations are also on other knives produced by CRKT. And why these serrations? Because he says that they don't get stuck in clothing. They're very efficient at what they do with leather-like objects. Now, as you can tell, this is Japanese style, Tonto. Um, Mrs. Rexu is Japanese. She was born in Tokyo. And um, not only do I appreciate her and the parents that made such a wonderful woman, I also appreciate the warrior culture of Japan. Talk about whew, from from samurai through World War II. They could be some brutal people, but they made some damn fine blades. Made for penetration. And at this length, when you slash, the shape of it encourages maximum edge contact with whatever object like cheesecake. <laughs> I'm thinking about you, cheesecake. So that it stays in the slice longer. But wait. There's more. There is this. I wish they would have done an OD green. Um, not so much ACU, which was that tragedy of a camouflage pattern, but more like a OCP or a scorpion or something like that. A, a nice Udi Green, Udi Green, Black Blade. Oh, come on, Sierra KT. You know you want to make one for me. For us. I mean, I'm a, for us. Once again, the Paracord. The Nano XL. The Kydex Sheath. Yeah, I had to stop and think about that for a second. The one copy is not doing it for me today. Pop this out. And once again, look at this really, really pretty blade. It's gorgeous. 
Now I am going to be having some uh, sound blurbs of why he does not make his knives with hand guards. And basically, I'm gonna let you in on a secret, it's because he doesn't want it to, if you have this in a concealed place and you're getting attacked, he doesn't want it to snag on clothing. And also give you the maximum option of how you can handle your knife, etc., etc., etc. So, this is the Hisatsu. There you go. Now, now that's black. That's not black. That's black. Non-reflective EDP blade finish. Textured rubber handle grip with polypropylene core. The stock sheath is glass reinforced, molly capable, compatible, compatible sheath. Blade length 7.13, 440A steel, EDP blade finish, blade thickness is 0 0.20, overall length is 12.25, weight 8 ounces, handle, polypropylene core with textured rubber grip, fixed blade knife with sheath, the Hisatsu fixed blade. Now, there is also a folder, the Hisatsu series folder. And that's this. Ambidextrous. Once again, we look at the very minimalistic shape. Thumb disc. Now this has something called the outburst. Boop. And yes, I did have Mr. Veff himself install these. So once again, this goes along the same philosophy of not having anything to get snagged on if you're pulling it out in a rush. The ability to, now I'm not a martial artist, but I'm a marital artist, whoa. Linear lock, so you look at this, you try to disengage the blade with, without engaging this, it's not. It's locked in, it's safe, secure, as much as anything can be safe and secure, and it basically turns it into a fixed blade for your own peace of mind. Ah, pull this back, disengage, flip, baby, very nice. So this is the Hisatsu series. Outburst assisted opening, automated linear safety, glass reinforced nylon handles, blade length 3.88, OS 8 steel, Corrosion resistant coating, blade thickness 0.16, overall length 8.75, close length 5, weight 5.8 ounces, glass reinforced nylon, assisted folding knife with linear lock. So that is what started it all and it led to all of this. I am going to be posting up some of his credentials. I want you to understand the why, the appreciation of a warrior culture, okay? Um, I myself was in the army for many years. Uh, Mr. Williams was in the army for many years. When you go and you interact with people, when you start learning about things, I mean, who hasn't watched Kung Fu Theater and, you know, just turn, you know, go into your kitchen, destroy some of your parents' uh, cutlery, turn them into, you know, fighting weapons, stuff like that. But <laughs> coming out of it, coming into it as an adult, joining the military, uh, getting to see other countries, how they do their things, to understand their military culture, the why, when you see how Mr. Williams has incorporated his why into the design of these knives, I want you to be able to appreciate that. Please don't be cynical. If you're going to be cynical, go look in the mirror, be cynical. But I just am doing this for the love of what someone has incorporated into what they do for a living. That's pretty freaking awesome. So I'm going to post some stuff, and I'll be right back. Okay, just to let you know, <laughs> the Hisatsu means certain kill, certain death. Okay, now the next uh, blade, we're going to be going over to folders now. 
is the Otana Shinoken, which means silent sword or silent blade. And it looks like this. Grippy G10 jimping. The locking system, this actually comes forward. When, it, when the blade is, I'll show it when the blade's extended. This locks the blade in. Once again, turning it into a folding fixed blade, a fixed a folder that turns into a fixed blade because of what they've incorporated into the system. Okay, and this is, yes it is, a frame lock. So this is not spring-loaded, needless to say. Seeing how slim this is. And once again, look at this shape. This is very pokey. I believe the, you know, tickle the term is it, it's very sticky on the ribby or something. Once again, this is a perfect shape for penetration. So this is what I wanted to show you. Okay. Otanashi no ken. Bringing that forward. You cannot... Well, I'm not going to say there are, you know, there are warning labels on things for reasons. Just ask uh, Six Finger Louie. So it's basically a fixed blade. Once again, mind you, minus the lanyard. I like lanyards. I can't, can't lie about that. But if you're in an interesting area, you might not necessarily want a lanyard. But the, the sleek design, it's very, very narrow. If, you, if you're wearing a kit, if this is in a pocket of a jacket, your pocket of your jeans, you know, et cetera, et cetera, this is not, this, it's very thin. There you go. And there, that's the technical word. So we're going to pull this back. I'm going to fold it. And there you go. This is the Otanashi no Ken. No Ken, no Ken do. But wait, there's more. Oh, here, check this out. There you go. Size comparison. There you go. See what I mean? That's pretty darn long. Sometimes you want that distance from your enemy combative apple pie. Not bad in comparison. And we're going to put this this way. There you go. But wait. Let me... Oh, there it is. There it is. You're like, oh, we just saw this one, but wait. But wait. This one has factory installed deftorations. Same setup. Locking. And there you go. So in his line of work, working with special operations units and global law enforcement, and I do believe he's gone to Africa to do various things and teach people. He'll carry knives. Uh, once again, I'm so excited to, to put up the sound burps later on because it has a little bit of story. I'm also going to do some links, not only to CRKT, but to Mr. Williams' site directly. Um, learn. We got nothing else better to do quite often than during this pandemic. Take a chance. Learn something new today. So here is that. Clip point blade design style. <laughs> Clip point blade style design for maximum penetration. Frame lock, manual safety, G10 handle with texture grip. Blade length, 4.52 inches, OS 8, corrosion resistant coating. Blade thickness, 0.16, overall length, 10.13 inches. There you go. Overall length closed would be 5.61 inches. Weight, 6.4 ounces. G10 folding knife with frame lock. Very nice. I'm going to post this up so you can take a look at it. Now, the next step I'm going to be showing you 
It's called the Sakamori. I'm gonna suck the Saka to you with the Sakamori. That almost went bad. Sakamori means noble defender. Okay. So these blades are a little bit different. Ta-da! More of a traditional ray skin. Cord wrap. This is nylon cord wrap. There's a hole in the center. You see how it's all wrapped. Aftermarket sheath, like I do. And let's take a look at the knife. Look at that. Let me put this right here. So, here we go. Now, this ha originally had a satin finish. I took it off and I did some cold bluing out here in the tiny world that is my front porch. But look at these traditional blades, blade design, blades, blades later on, blade right now. It's not a thin knife. Well, I mean, it is very thin and it fits well in the hand. Once again, we see the blade design philosophy that he uses here. But this is definitely more for the cut. I mean, it will penetrate, don't get me wrong, but this is definitely for the slash. I think you can, oh, you can actually see some of the stuff that I didn't take off with my sandpaper. It turned out pretty good. Remember once again, boys and girls, ask your mom and dad's uh, permission before using any bluing agents. Uh, some people would, would say I ruined, you know, hey, you know, I buy my knives for me, I modify for me, I share with you. Sometimes it's just to show you what you don't want to do, but I really like it. In fact, uh, the next two blades, I'm gonna put up a picture in a little bit, but let's put this right here. Voltang dual grind premium high carbon steel blade, traditional style core wrapped handle, bolt boltron, form boltron, shields with molly compatible convertible belt clip system. Blade length five point seven. It, <laughs> I have to slow down. Okay, the coffee's kicking in. Blade length five point seven six inches. Blade blade edge plain zero one tool steel. Something to say about that later on. From the factory satin. Blade thickness, 0.24. Overall length, 10.50. Length, oh, 10.50, I already said that. Caffeine, weight, 9.10. Cord wrapped handle, fixed blade knife with sheath. Sheath weight from the factory, 3.40 ounces. Out of stock. So, I'm just gonna notice with the other two blades, because I do have two other one of these. I looked at the design. You'll notice that on some of my other videos. I do not actually add vestrations to it. I think she's good the way she is. So there you go. The Sakamori. Let's take a look at the other ones. So the next blade is called the Shimbu which means military might or sublime martial moral power. Let's take a look at the knife. See if I can say this right. This is getting up to the size of a wakazashi. I'm pretty sure my wife will hit me if I say it wrong. I probably just said it wrong. I'm probably going to get hit. But here we go. And... What I'm going to be doing, once again, is I'm going to be putting in a blurb on the Y. Okay. And you're going to notice the similarities. The fact that the next, this knife and the next knife is basically this knife, but longer. Case in point. I just got done oiling these because even though you use the bluing agent, you still... This is tool steel. You still have to oil them on the regular. 
and it makes him look really cool. So, put this here. Put that there. The Shinbu. Blade, work, <laughs> blade length 9.25. Plain edge. YK30 steel satin finish, except that I, of course, cold glued mine. 0.23 inch blade thickness. Overall length 14.75. So you see, boom, it gets bigger. That's what she said. Weight 13.30 ounces. Quarter wrap handle. Fixed blade knife with sheath. Full tang, dual gripe, premium high card, but we already said that before because it's just like this. So, I'm going to move things around and we're going to be showing you the last blade of the CRKT line that I have. So, the last part of the CRKT collection that I have is called the Hisho, which means certain victory. Now, just like I said, Baby, mama, here comes daddy. Dun 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 We're gonna need a bigger table. Uh, I have really long arms. So this is longer. And after I put this down, you know, towards the end, blah blah blah. Okay, I'm I'm repeating myself. I have already said it. Red Hill Sheath, <laughs> Fire Starter, because why not? I have this as a drop leg. So this will mount to your belt in between a belt loop. Of course, this can also go on a duty belt or wherever you so determined to, mounting plate. Then profile knives. And you know, the, these are not super chunky, thick handles or anything. They're, they're thick enough to get the job done. Not what she said. And, ooh, mama, hold on, let me put this here. That's a, that's a whole lot of sheath, my goodness. So here it is. Got that tough cloth on it, so it dries. Now the picture I'm gonna put up here, bloop, was taken at the dojo of the Four Winds in the city called Encinitas around the Marine Corps country. And I was able to find him there. He doesn't live in California anymore. Can't blame him. And I showed him these blades and he was nice enough to take a picture with me. He was uh, enjoying the fact that my wife is Japanese and he was talking to her Japanese and yada, 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 Japanese. And um, I really, really, I drove all the way down to Encinitas to show him what I did with my blades that are his blades. It's because I appreciate him so much. And there you go. Oh, wow. I'm going to do this. There you go. So, not bad for CRKT. Not bad at all. Now, I'm going to go get something. I'll be right back. Okay, the last two knives I'm going to show you are folders. Um, he makes a lot more stuff. EXO, outside of CRKT. He has more knives made intra CRKT that I do not own because I felt that at a certain uh, point I'm just mimicking something that might be a list a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, and I feel like I have a good cross section to show you and I just don't feel like I need to buy them. There you go. But I'm going to give you a link in the description for the system of strategy and William's blade design. So my first knife is this one. Now I've already done a video with the two knives, this knife and another knife. 
So I do recommend that you go check out that video. Carbon fiber, single piece. The design is supposed to replicate or represent the wrapping of a samurai sword. Titanium, see the texture. This is their logo. Logo. <laughs> this is their logo. This is made by in collaboration with Lion Steel of Italy. M390 Steel. Something about uh, possibility of some heat treating issues in the past, mind you, with M390. I'm pretty darn sure that a fine quality Italian company such as Lion Steel would have taken care of that. Once again, the Vestorations. I purchased this at the 2018 Blade Show West in Portland before it came a unpleasant place to be. And it's a frame lock also. Ambidextrous deep carry clip. Most likely, if you're going to go into a dangerous situation, you probably shouldn't have the really cool samurai bead on it, but you know, you can always take off a lanyard. It's a beautiful knife. Now for the last one. I got this one from Blade HQ. It's a smaller one. It's kind of like me, Mrs. Rexu. I'm bigger than she is. Hey, at least where it matters. Anodized blue. I do wish they would have put their insignia on this. It's just begging to be done. Might have to have it lasered in myself someday. Iron steel. So, here is my James Williams collection. Thank you so much for hanging out so far. I know this is a bit long. You know what I'm saying. You can hear it in your brain right now. So, what'd you think? Have I helped you figure out that you want to try to find some of these sadly discontinued blades? Because quite often, quite a few of these are discontinued, especially on this side of the table. You might be able to find some of these. Um, I am looking forward to, because they have done, uh, it's Damasteel. I missed out. You know how you look at a knife, I'm like, I'll get it later on. And then they sell out and they don't make them anymore. And you're like, ah, so that was kind of me. But I am looking for getting this one in Damasteel. Hey, Williams family. How about hooking me up with a knife so I can buy it from you? Yeah, that's right. I'll buy it from you. I really want to be able to share more of the Williams family tradition with you. Now I'm going to zip my pie hole. And Handles are simple. Play some uh, they're relatively flat so that you can get a correct angle. A rounder handle makes it harder to get the correct angle of cutting. You have a relatively neutral handle so that you can use whatever grasp that you need. You don't have anything sticking out the back, so if you have to use the blade in different ways, that you can actually support the point from the back. What happens when you start making pointy stuff off the back is now you've limited what you're doing with the front, which makes no sense. The heat show was designed because I was getting requests from guys in country uh, in direct contact for a larger knife. And I define a large knife by one that's able to cut through the forearm bones and take off a limb. Small knives cannot do that, and they have to be used a particular way because of that. Large knives can. And when you're dealing with people who are on opium, they're a tough culture anyway, maybe epinephrine or some other type of, of a drug, you need to have something that really uh, has an impact on them when you use it. This is also uh, a Japanese design. Hisho means certain victory. Um, Hisatsu, by the way, means a sure kill. Uh, we used a different wrap on this. Grip is usually the thing that becomes uh, compromised the easiest. It's cold, it's muddy, it's wet. You've got gloves on, you're tired, you haven't eaten for a while, you're dehydrated. All of those factors, you want to get the best possible grip. And with that, I want to thank you so much for taking some time to learn something new with me today. I really do appreciate it. 
Hope this um, gives you a better understanding of the why. For somebody who comes in and does collaborations with CRKT, does their own stuff, um, have fun with the hobby. I mean, let's find joy in what we can, right? And as always, thank you so much and have a nice day.